Greetings pen pals. I have a Jinhao model 85 to show you today. This is made to look like a Parker 51, more specifically the reissue of the Parker 51 that came out uh, this year. I don't have the 2021 model Parker 51 to show you because frankly, I've been a little reluctant to purchase one because I really think it's overpriced. The pricing on this uh, Jinhao is obviously much more reasonable, and so I picked up one of these. This is a wooden bodied Jinhao pen. So let's just take a quick look, compare it to the wood on another Jinhao. This is the Jinhao um, Model 9056. Uh, this is a fairly recent um, uh, 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 Jinhao that's um, made to look a bit like a Conklin All-American. You can see the type of finish is, is a bit different, but I would say the overall quality of the woodwork, so to speak, is about is comparable and about the same. Obviously this has a wooden cap and this has a metal cap, but just thought you might wanna see the difference in the wood and the finishes. In terms of size of the pen, it's a pretty conventionally sized pen, not a thick pen, but lengthwise it's right up there. Here's, here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. Um, uh, not a particularly light pen, kind of right in the middle of the road, weighs in at 24 grams. It has a screw off cap that takes two full turns to unscrew. It does post and post nicely. Um, you have a plastic inner cap with the thread. So it's plastic threads on metal threads, and then you have plastic against the wood for posting. So you don't have metal there, so the plastic is gonna protect the wood from getting marred a bit, so that's actually pretty nice. I think it's a decent length posted. I think it's really too short unposted, but again, your mileage may vary. It's got a nice, long, comfortable section going down to a hooded steel uh, nib. These threads here are quite smooth, and this piece here is actually quite nicely made and doesn't really pose any particular discomfort or problem. So you have a nice long section. You could grip it right on top of these threads if you really want to, or if you want to be nuts, you can grip it on the wood piece, etc. But all in all, done pretty nicely, I think. Um, and again, I kind of like what they did here with this plastic threads here. So you have the plastic to protect yourself against the uh, uh, protect the wood when you post it. Now, uh, it's hard to see on the video, but there's a screw all, that's visible all the way at the end of the cap. That screw might corrode over time. That's the screw that holds the finial on. Time will tell, but that's just something to, uh, to think about. Um, in terms of the clip, we're talking about a classic Parker style clip, and it is very, very uh, Parker-like. Here it is compared to a genuine Parker Model 75, and you can see it's pretty much right up there uh, in terms of um, uh, clip uh, look-alikeness. So this is really, really meant to, to uh, uh, be a Parker-type uh, pen. Um, the, this cap uh, comes in a couple of different finishes and designs, different wood colors, plastic barrels, etc. This particular one I think is very nice, and this particular cap with the reading on the cap is actually done quite nicely. Along the cap band, it just has Jin Hao subtly etched, etched along the cap band, no model number or anything like that. It has this um, conical step pyramid typed finial and uh, the finial on the uh, distal end of the pen is just simply smooth uh, wood. Um, that's pretty much the deal with the exterior features of the pen. As you could imagine, this is cartridge converter, comes with a standard Jinhao converter. And between the wood and the metal everywhere, this is not a pen that will be eyedroppered ever at any point in time uh, under any circumstances. So um, that's pretty much um, what, uh, what the deal is with, um, with this guy. Um, well, I think that will just about do it in terms of the overall parts and uh, features of this pen. Like I said, very, 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 very Parker-like. Let's just go back and look at these clips. I mean, crying out loud, this is just, uh, you know, no bones about it. It's meant to be uh, a Parker-like pen, but how does it write? That remains to be seen, and you're gonna see that right now. All right, folks, what we're writing with here is a Jinhao uh, number 85 and this has a steel nib that is hooded and this is in fine and this is very smooth exceptionally smooth actually a really really nice writing pen 
Uh, it's probably about average wetness. Um, writes really, really well. Um, I'm very, very pleased with it. Um, not much else to say here. Um, just a just a really nice, solid uh, writer that flows great and um, really, really impressed. I'm going to give it a uh, big, uh, big thumbs up. Uh, really, really, really nice writing uh, pen. Um, speaking of nice, what would be really nice is if you all could please like, comment, share, and subscribe. That would all be very much appreciated. I think that's about all we want to say about this Jinhao um, Model 85 for today. But let's talk about this ink now for a minute, shall we? All right, this ink is from uh, J. Herban. And this is Tear de Fu. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation. I think Ter de Fu, Ter de Fu from J. Herban. Um, this is a nice sort of reddishy brown, like a br maybe with a little bit of a brick tinge to it. Just a really, really nice uh, ink. Let's take a look how it looks on the color swatch. So that's what it looks like on the color swatch. You can see we're talking about a brown little bit of reddish tinge to it. Not quite as say uh, a little more red and a little less orange than say Diamine Cherry Sunburst. Um, more reddish than say Diamine Terracotta. Um, um, just to compare it to another brown ink from J. Herban, it's definitely, as you can see, although they're both brown, this is a very much more of a reddish brown than Le Dete, which is just a straight up brown. Um, Diamond Ancient Copper, which is sort of a, some would say is a reddish brown, but again, more of a coppery kind of brown. Uh, Birmingham Soft Pretzel, um, Birmingham Soft Pretzel, you know, again, does have a little bit of a red tinge to it, but not as much as this. And um, Ackerman SBRE Brown is more of a chocolatey kind of brown. The closest ink I actually have to it is Birmingham Bourbon which as you can see is actually fairly similar. Um, but again, this uh, one, uh, the Terre de Fou is definitely a little more red. Um, anyway, that's what this ink looks like on this Erodia paper. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper, shall we? All right, like we said, this ink is from J. Herban. And this is Terre de Fou. And this is on Tomoe River paper. And again, nice, nice ink, like we said, brown, brown with a reddish brown, brick, brick brown, brick red, brick brown, however you wanna call it, but a nice, uh, pretty ink from uh, from uh, Jay Herban. Um, I think that will just about do it for this week. I hope you enjoyed watching this video because I sure enjoyed making it for you folks. And as I always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.